For the longest time ever, building a SaaS tool required multi-million dollar investments, times of few months for you to actually go ahead, design, develop and test and launch an MVP version, only to realize that after all of that hard work, you actually need to market that and acquire users for your platform. But with the rise of no-code tools like Webflow and membership platforms like Wiz, MemberStack and Webflow memberships, that process can be a lot shorter and you can come to an MVP version of your SaaS platform, of your product or anything similar to that in just a few months and start doing what you actually need to do and that is finding the best possible way to acquire new customers on the platform itself. Before getting into the video, a little bit about myself. I'm the founder and CEO of Flow Ninja, and over the past few years, we've helped many different companies and founders create their own no-code tools with the tools like Webflow, MemberStack, Waze, et cetera, et cetera. And actually, we have our own in-house platform we're also gonna be showcasing in this video. So you can go ahead and explore the broader area of what is actually possible with a low-code, no-code, or whatever you wanna call it, platform, and how far can you actually go with those. So I said, uh, before jumping into the tools themselves, I wanna go ahead and go to the overview of codemap.io that is actually a platform built with no code tools serving everyone who actually wants to hire no code developers or wants to find work as a no code developer and basically they've received 250k funding so this is hopefully gonna open your mind a little bit more on things which are possible with SaaS tools like Webflow and how how can you build an actual business with SaaS tools like Webflow and you can see on their website Okay, you can hire top no-code local talent and automation talent. You can sign up. You have a fully custom onboarding flow to go ahead and sign up to the platform and a whole backend is custom. And they're backed by, I mean, like Matte Rimac, which I think is one of the greatest entrepreneurs in our, in our recent times, even though he's not so public about it. So you can actually see, okay, people and actually investors are starting to realize if the idea is good and is unique enough, it doesn't matter if it's built with a full-on solution or is built with a no-code solution. But we're also going to be covering ways which you can actually go ahead and maybe with time when you do realize, okay, this idea is great, but I need to build my own application like that's away from Webflow. And like there are ways you can actually use all of the source code you've, you've just built on Webflow and build your own React platform or something like that, whatever you decide to do. Even our own agency, Flow Ninja, uses no-code tools to create our own platforms. Specifically, in our case, it's a project management platform we've created for our clients to interact with our agency and also to interact with the processes in our agency much easier. And also for our team internally to go ahead and basically view all of the tasks and update the clients, record tutorials for the clients, see their time history in a way that is specifically created to our service offering and to our, like we like to call it, six-star experience. I've just cloned our platform to a testing environment so I can show that so I don't go into any our client's data. So you can see, okay, you can go ahead and see maybe how, how much time I've left. We've integrated Chart.js, for example, in this case, so we can have everything interactive. We can request a task, I mean, add a new task inside of here. Here. We can upload training videos for our clients so that we, they can go ahead and figure out everything. This is the view like we have internally at the agency, but there is also a view for our clients to go ahead and view all of the tasks, upload new tasks, view these tutorials we're uploading here, and also for everybody to go ahead and report a P1 bug if something actually breaks, uh, like that is a top, top, top priority that we need to jump on as, straight as, as soon as possible. If you're familiar with the tool set, if you're familiar with Figma, you're familiar with Webflow, you're familiar with the no-code tools and integrations, there is a great chance, I mean like a 100% chance, you're going to be able to build your no-code tool completely on your own. And I don't want to sound like it's it's too hard because like depending on how complex you want your SaaS tool to be, it can be extremely hard and it can be on the level of actual software, software development. But if you want to build an MVP that is like a lot easier, there's no reason, like if you know these tools, that you cannot create everything on your own. I wouldn't say create it in a weekend, like there is a, like a huge marketing fluff around, okay, you're going to create that in a few days and like everything is going to work. It's probably not. And it's better to put it, okay, it's going to take a few months. But with the steps I've just described, you're going to be able to just in five steps, go ahead and create a fully working no-code platform. So the first step, it's going to be creating a brief. Before getting into the development and everything like that, it's really important to figure out, okay, who is my SaaS tool for? Who is going to be using it? Why is it different? What different features does it have? 
how we're going to be helping our users with our platform, what's our go-to-market strategy, how we're going to be giving away free value, how we're going to be converting those users, and just having the whole idea, okay, from the beginning to the end of how everything is going to work before actually committing your full-time or like part-time, if this is your side project to the platform itself. And like spending even a month on creating this and consulting other people, seeing if this is a good idea or not, is going to save you that much more time in the design process and also in the development process later on. And you're going to create a much more professional platform instead of just winging it and going directly into Webflow. After going ahead and having your brief, the next step is going to be designing everything in Figma. Again, there is a great chance that you can use a Webflow template and start creating your product. There is no reason you, you cannot do that and skip this part and probably create a platform even quicker. But I'm always looking even like with our agency or with any business I'm building, how can I create something that will be timeless or something like that? So that, okay, if I'm investing my time here, I want to be investing my time into something I'm going to be doing for the next 10 years. So that's why I always like to go ahead and take a look at it. Okay, let's spend some time into actually thinking about like the wireframing process, how the application is going to be working what's going to be the user flow, how everything is going to look like afterwards in the design phase. And you can also go ahead and find freelancers or agencies to go ahead and design your SaaS tool on platforms like Upwork.com, Fiverr, or maybe even on experts.webflow.com, which we're going to be mentioning a little bit later on for Webflow development to go ahead and maybe find a, a freelancer or an agency that's going to be able to help you go and build a whole end-to-end -end experience. After having everything in Figma, the next step is going to be actually going into the Webflow development. If you have chosen a template, probably is going to be adjusting that template, not actually doing the full on development. But let's say if we're actually going to be building a, a fully custom uh, SaaS platform, we're going to need somebody to go ahead and develop this for us. Again, I'm mentioning like from the start, okay, you can do this on your own, or maybe you want to invest a lot more. You want a lot more eyes onto the platform and you want to work with experts who have been building other platforms, et cetera, et cetera. So like the other way is, okay, maybe you're going to find designers on Upwork or maybe you're going to go with the experts at webflow.com route to find a freelance or an agency to work with so that you can make sure that the whole process is covered. After that, you're going to be going to integrations. I mean, depending on your platform, like you might have a lot of integrations, specifically, maybe you're going to be integrating with some APIs, Maybe you're going to be creating your own API that's going to be proprietary to your SaaS tool and then integrating that API into your platform. But usually what we see is that we're using Make. I suggest using Make over Zapier because uh, we've seen that Zapier can become pretty expensive with time if you start having a lot of tasks for your platform. So just make sure, okay, let's go ahead and avoid that issue uh, and figure out how much our platform is going to be actually uh, on a monthly basis with all of the all of the things we're going to be doing and figuring out does it make sense to go ahead and like develop it in that way or maybe we need to reduce the amount of zaps or in this case uh, like on the make integration triggers or stuff like that that we need to do. Then after that, we're going to be needing Stripe to go ahead and process payments. There are other tools you can use to process payments, but because Stripe is integrated with uh, Webflow memberships, it's, it's integrated with MemberStack or WISD, which we're going to be using as a memberships tool, uh, it's probably going to be the easiest. Afterwards, we're going to use uh, probably Notion or Airtable to store some of the data and to push data back and forth because for our own project management tool, we use Notion because we're able to interact with our platform in Notion and also in Webflow. So it allows project managers maybe to see an overall picture in Notion and then for developers to go ahead and see how everything is working inside of the platform itself. And then the final fifth thing is the hardest one probably to choose, and that is the membership platform. And like this specific video is going to be mostly focused on the membership platforms and like all of the benefits and like maybe downfalls of some of the platforms that you basically have at your disposal. And that's going to be member stack, Webflow memberships and WIST. Starting from member stack and specifically member stack 2.0. Basically, they're the, let's say how you call it, like the OGs in the game. They've been around the longest since 2018, I think. Like their companies like Slack, their companies like entrepreneur.com that are actually using member stack to actually host their own content. So it's been tested and proven that it works. And that's why like it might be, let's say the safest choice if you look at it from that way. But I would say the biggest differentiator between all of these two platforms, because I mean, like you can go on the website, see features, this has this feature, this doesn't have feature but overall the biggest uh, differentiator is that member stack integrates with webflow and react so if you're looking maybe long term and at one point you're okay i developed everything in webflow but 
Maybe my investors are pushing me to develop my own platform. I don't want to stay on Webflow anymore. I want to develop my own custom tool. Member Stack is going to be allowing you to use the same membership platform to go ahead and run your SaaS tool on Webflow. And then when you transition to React-based components, you're going to be able to go ahead and reuse everything. So you're not going to be needing to build everything up from scratch. You're going to have things to reuse. And also on the Webflow side, you're probably going to be uh, able to reuse the front end and Webflow is slowly releasing a Webflow plus React. I mean, that's still in beta. So like maybe at the time of you watching the video, it might come out fully. So there's also possibilities that like, even when you develop the whole platform in Webflow, you decide that you want to move to a custom solution. You can still use Webflow for your component system and to build all of the new components inside of Webflow. Wiz uh, is the new, like the new kid on the block, how you want to say it. I've, I've used Wiz in 1.0 before, like a, a while back. It was like a newer platform, like it didn't have a lot of users, but afterwards they've launched uh, Wiz 2.0 and it's been something pretty unique that they've, they've built. Even though it's a new platform, it's still in beta at the time of recording the video and like it's invite only. Probably that's going to be going away pretty soon. I'm going to be leaving links down below for all of the platforms so you can check them out below. But the pretty interesting thing is that they're built directly just for Webflow. So like you have a member stack and like they're built for Webflow and React. So you're going to be able to continue. Well, that probably comes with some compromises. But if you're thinking, okay, Webflow is going to be my go-to tool forever. I don't want to move away from Webflow, then Wiz is probably going to be the tool for you to go ahead and integrate everything much more seamlessly. You're going to be able to use attributes to go ahead and connect Wiz with Webflow back and forth and have the, the whole connection like much more seamless. And that's like, I, I would say like pretty big benefit uh, for you uh, to choose Wiz. And I, I would say also if you're thinking, okay, okay, I want to stay in Webflow, but Webflow memberships is also there, which we're going to be covering next. Webflow membership is going to be allowing you to go ahead and create everything that is inside side of Webflow. So like it's going to limit you to the feature set of the Webflow memberships, but Wiz is going to allow you to go ahead and create all of that amazing uh, kind of custom API integration stuff and connect to any kind of external API you want to. Then the final and the last one is Webflow memberships and logic, which is at, again at the time we're recording the video is still in beta. That's probably going to change by the time you're watching this. So like you can always visit links down below and see at which stage all of these are. But a really great thing about Webflow is going to be that Webflow memberships is going to be the actual, like, let's say no code or low code solution for everything. For both member stack and Wiz, if you want to actually use them to the full potential, you're going to need to be really great at HTML and CSS. That's okay. But you're going to need to be incredibly good at JS in order to understand all of the JS principles in order to actually develop your SaaS tool, connect all of the APIs, Maybe you're going to be creating your own APIs and it's much more into, okay, we're using Webflow for the as a visual development tool for the front end. And then we're going to be writing a lot more code and connecting to the, to those two tools versus Webflow memberships, which is going to allow you to do everything out of the box and like click um, like everything inside of the Webflow visual builder and create your no code platform. So I would say it's more about if you want some membership portals, if you want some gated content and stuff like that, which is maybe for your online course or something something similar to that. And basically you're gonna be limited by the Webflow feature set, which is great. Okay, when you do maybe the design, you know, okay, these are the Webflow features we can have. Let's design in, inside of those constraints so we can actually develop everything properly. And it's probably gonna give you a little bit of a faster turnaround time because you're not gonna be writing code, but it might happen that you hit a wall and that you need a, a, this core feature developed for your online course or something like that and that you cannot proceed further, that you need to switch to Wiz or member stack. But again, you're going to have everything developed in Webflow either way. I would say that more of if you're building a SaaS tool or something like that, you're probably going to be using member stack or Wiz. But if you're using some sort of gated content or gating anything inside of uh, your marketing website, uh, you're probably going to be using uh, Webflow memberships as an extension of your marketing strategy to go ahead and kind of capitalize on, on all of your visitors or stuff like that. So the verdict is it's probably going to be pretty hard for me to choose uh, because it really depends on your use case. Member stack, if you're planning to maybe sometimes move away from Webflow, it's going to be a great tool. Wiz, if you plan to stay into the Webflow ecosystem forever and you want to build co more complex stuff, same as member stack, like more complex stuff and more, more complex SaaS tools, there are going to be tools for you. And then Webflow memberships is going to be if you want to go ahead and stay in completely inside of the Webflow ecosystem and just use the feature sets that are available out of the box.